Welcome to the APC webinar series. Um, today I will be discussing and addressing the unique challenges of MVA-based viral vector product development and manufacture. So in this webinar, I will bring you to the full uh, comprehensive journey of a study case at APC for the MVA-based viral vector manufacturing. We will also touch on all aspects of the process development, upstream, downstream, analytical and scale up. I also like to show a little bit our PAT capabilities and engineering modeling that can help us to speed up the PD and seamless process transfer from bench to pilot scale. A lot of interest of MVA based viral vector in pharma industry, um, where it is initially a, a vaccine against the smallpox, but now uh, we seen was seen as a potent vector for vaccine against infectious disease and cancer treatment. However, despite of the huge potential of MVA, there are some challenges for the manufacturing of, of this uh, that has to be addressed. Most the importantly is the production is uh, currently is commercially uh, close to non-viable uh, because it is economically unattractive, unattractive to produce. Uh, secondly, it is lack of the scalability as most of the MVA produced on adherent cell culture format. The thirdly, um, uh, it has to maintain the sterility during the operation, so that somehow limit the technology that we can use for this process. Um, and lastly, um, it is pretty difficult actually to control the critical process parameters and which resulted in the poor process robustness in the end. However, in this webinar, we would like to showcase um, on how the team here at APC overcome those challenges. We uh, have managed to um, design a process that, uh, that is able to overcome the scale constraint, in which in this case we will show you later. Uh, secondly, we have enhanced the production um, capacity as well as productivity and process recovery in which resulted in uh, reduced costs for the manufacturing and last but not least um, improved pro process robustness so if you look at uh, here on the right hand side um, we in the upstream side of the process we have uh, performed the cell line selection um, and as well the, the suitable market carry screening for the particular cell line and followed by that um, we have optimized the growth condition uh, by, uh, by understanding the, the, the uh, suitable supplementation as well as the feeding strategy and the media exchange, which is that uh, uh, contributed to how actually we efficiently passage uh, the cells in the bioreactor. Um, then uh, with that as well, we have as well identified um, you know, um, a vessel in order uh, to produce uh, the cells in the in in the on the upstream side, which is using a combination of the TFLAS, the hyperstat, and the single-use bioreactor. On the downstream process, uh, the the important uh, uh, parameter here that we're looking at is obviously the the, the target title PFU per dose, and uh, to show a, a superior impurity clearance. So the technology that that we have, uh, the constraint, uh, the technology they have to screen in this case, it has to be a single-use, uh, sterile, operationally friendly, and uh, to have a sh very short lead time. For example, that here I just learned out there, the con it comprises of uh, continuous certification, enzyme digestion, chromatography, and TFF unit process. Next, I will bring you to the upstream uh, process uh, development for MVA production. As you can see, the first um, figure there is um, the old process uh, provided by the client, which incorporate the uh, flatware platform all the way from the vial tour to the production stage uh, in the roller bolter process. <clears throat> so the main challenges here is obviously at uh, the scale uh, in order to meet the higher dose uh, requirements for the clinical supply. So on top of the scale, um, the process um, for flat rate format is actually very time consuming um, to process and as well it can increase the risk of contamination. 
So with that, the new version um, process that we develop here at APC uh, is actually a combination of a flatware and a suspension format in form of microcarrier. So in order to do so, there's a lot of process optimization uh, which is required to select the suitable market carrier for the process and then followed by the optimization uh, process in the actual bioreactor that include the, uh, how we detach and how we de attach back the cells on the market carrier um, and then optimization of media, media exchange strategy and followed by a, a very um, tedious actually uh, optimization or passaging strategy and, and, and end up with the guessings and the mixing uh, that needs to be optimized. <clears throat> so in the end, the process that we develop here is actually scalable and is operationally efficient. This slide is just to demonstrate a comparison between the different platform that, uh, that is available out there to produce the same amount of uh, product at the end stage of the process. As you can see there, for example, here, that you will require a 15 RC40 to operate in order to produce the same amount of product as in one of 250 liter single use bioreactor and which we know that they are industrial standard and it is widely supported by different vendors available out there and it has been demonstrated at, at APC and VLE that it can be done and of course uh, we have reliable manufacturing supply chain management Now moving to the downstream process of the MVA production, the main focus here is, that to, is to develop uh, a process that is scalable, uh, further reduce the process impurity, as well as maintaining a high viral recovery. Uh, for that, uh, first I would like to show you the old version process provided by the client, which is short and simple, but it is actually fit for purpose based on the clinical requirements at that particular phase. However, the process impurity will need further improvement, which is demonstrated in the table, in order to meet the target specification um, by the clinician. So further process development was carried out here at APC to overcome this. Therefore, the new version of downstream process train is as shown as on the right hand side uh, over here, where additional step was taken in order to accommodate the changes in the upstream where we incorporate the microcarrier in the process, as well as to further reduce process impurity. I will further explain on how we develop the process in the next slide. Selection of humid process for large viruses requires a sterile process, uh, which is preferably a single use, and it is, has to be operationally friendly. So the first unit process is the microcarrier removal step. So here we have to ensure that there are no microcarrier presence in the process. So that is then require a process understanding um, on the optimal time of harvest for the cells to naturally detach from the microcarrier followed by microcarrier removal through the harvest tunnel. Following that, this is a single use uh, continuous centrifugation. From here, the microcarrier free cells were concentrated and resuspended in the process buffer. In this step, process, the majority of the impurity in form of BSA was removed. Uh, this step also helped to reduce the process volume early enough in the downstream process train so that it is easy to manage for the subsequent step. The next one is the use of uh, mechanical lysis in form of continuous sonication to efficiently lyse the cells. Uh, in this case, this allows us to process a large volume of materials um, and, in, and in the initial study we are also considering uh, using um, a, a chemical lysis however the recovery is not satisfying and it is inconsistent so in the end uh, we stick on using the sonication uh, in, uh, for the, for the uh, lysis of the, of the cells Post sonication, the cell debris was clarified using continuous centrifugation. So note as well here that uh, the defiltration uh, or a combination of both is also an option for this step. However, we are satisfied with the viral recovery only by using centrifugation. The next is the hostile DNA removal by enzyme digestion. 
uh, we found that uh, this is the most efficient way to reduce whole DNA in the process uh, compared to other methods such as chromatography. So obviously um, it is uh, because uh, just the nature of the virus that DNA of the cells can strongly bind uh, to the viral surface, uh, which is impossible to be separated by uh, chromatography techniques. The next one is the chromatography, which is incorporated uh, in order to remove the host protein, uh, the BSA, uh, residual BSA, and uh, residual uh, digestion enzyme uh, from the process. So for this step, we have worked with different resin uh, membrane types, uh, monolith kind of technology, as well as a combination of different chemistry uh, to optimize, uh, in order to further reduce the process impurity. And the last but not least is the final formulation step by TFF, in this case the TFET. Uh, but this step is pretty much a process transfer from the client. But we do have experience on running TFF for MBA uh, in the format of uh, cassette or hollow fiber. With the downstream process train developed at APC, we have consistently demonstrated a good overall viral recovery across the process, which is approximately 30%, that uh, obviously met the set target by the clients. The process also uh, showed impurity clearance that meet the target uh, and well below the allowable limit, in this case for the BSA, uh, the host DNA, and the HCP. From the upstream to the downstream, and now we move to the analytical um, section um, in which I'd like to say that uh, the process development uh, that we we'll carry out here at APC won't be possible without the involvement of our capable analytical team here at APC. So I would like to showcase here um, uh, our cap capabilities on the upstream side. Um, so we are able to quantify um, a viral titer using different approach such as infectious titer by high throughput plaque assay or by TCID50 method. We can also quantify the viral particle by qPCR method and viral fingerprinting by the HPLC to identify uh, between a full and empty capsule, for example. On the downstream side, um, here the team also um, able to perform all analysis uh, for process-based impurities such as uh, quantifying uh, host cell protein, host cell DNA, uh, BSA, residual enzyme, and surfactant. And the other additional important CQA um, for, in this case for MVA process, is the aggregation uh, and the particle sizing. So, which is knowing that MVA is tend to form aggregation. So, uh, for, for this, we have the capability to run um, size exclusion, DLS, NTA, fluorescent spectroscopy, typical SDS, and capillary electrophoresis. Here, I would like to uh, quickly demonstrate um, additional, I suppose, in this orthog orthogonal technique that we use here at APC for monitoring virus aggregation. We have developed NTA and DLS method uh, in this case, to monitor level of aggregation in the process. So I would like here as well quickly show a, a case study, which is sample is taken uh, routinely during the process were analyzed using the LS. They showed an increase of viral particle size in which suggesting that the purification techniques at a particular time might not be suitable, or it can be another causing uh, the, the aggregation in the sample. So this has helped us uh, tremendously uh, to speed up the decision making during the process development. Next, I would like to touch a little bit on uh, how in APC that we try to implement the PAT, the process analytical technology, uh, uh, for monitoring the process in line. Uh, for example, here we have deployed uh, Eber biocapacitance, uh, in this case, to monitor viable cell density from microcurrent based process in the upstream. We also uh, here, for example, um, develop an inline method using Kenti Pump Pharma Flow um, here to monitor the cell confluency on the microcarrier process, which is um, still under development. 
um, on the downstream part of the process, uh, we have developed uh, inline um, FTIR based process monitoring, especially here for TFF. So with this, we are able to monitor the particular protein um, or salt spectrum uh, without have to take a sample and measure them online. So this will help us to reduce uh, the time um, and effort uh, during the process development because the process can be monitored directly without any intervention. <clears throat> in APC, we are constantly improving our PAT capabilities in order to help to understand the process at different stages or during the drug development. Now moving to the last stage of the development, we here also demonstrate a successful process scaling up from bench to the pilot scale at 50 liter and 250 liter um, with the manufacturing kind of mindset right during the uh, the development the process transfer uh, from the bench to the pilot scale is faster and smooth the whole process in this case is we use the a single use consumables that is to ensure sterility uh, and as well as to avoid um, a cleaning and a cleaning validation later in the GMP manufacturing CFD tools was also used to help to optimize the scale up, especially when we move to the uh, from the bench scale at three liter biorector, especially to fifty and to fifty liter biorector, uh, which is I will further explain in in the next slide. So the selected technology in this case is uh, geometrically equivalent, which is direct can be directly scalable. Um, it has seamless method transfer from a small scale to the larger scale. And equally important, it maintained the sterility in the process. So this slide is just to show how the scale differences can be a hindrance um, to a smooth process transfer um, in the scale up, particularly in the bioreactor. So in this case, the impeller angle between the three liter scale and the pilot scale at 50 and 250 liter is different, hence the mixing profile can also be different. For this, we combine both the CFD modeling and the typical mathematical modeling such as um, calculation for the impeller power number, the shear and P over V calculation. The aim here is to get the right agitation rate at 250 liter scale to ensure a good microcarrier suspension at different stages of the process with moderate shear to prevent cell damage. In my last slide here, I'd like to recap the key deliverables that we have achieved on accelerating the process development from bench to the pilot in 18 months here at APC. The process that we develop here is scalable, is robust, and cheaper to the patient. Thank you very much.